Aloha, everyone. Well, it's July 9th, 2016, and I'm up with the roosters. You can hear them crowing in the background, I'm sure. But I'm really excited about what I want to talk to you today. I've been actually in the back of my mind wanting to go over the this particular topic for some time because it's at the core, at the absolute root of uh, all the work I've received, you know, that I'm that I'm focusing on with the planetary ascension and the new Earth star reality. And I'm going to show you the plain vanilla version of it first, art-wise. This is called the Aeropax. And it is a system that Thoth presented to me probably in 1991, around that time. So I'm going to read you an article I wrote kind of composite article on it on uh, in the new Miss Ohm that I was putting out for some years. This is on my Spirit Mythos website. And you can see it again, the Isis Eye or Aeropax. It's called kind of both things. And I'm going to read to you from this. It's very tiny print, so p please bear with me. Oops. As I said, I originally brought this through in... Oops, sorry. I'm touching everything here. <laughs> As I said, it's early in the morning. I originally brought this through in um, 1991. Uh, but Simeon and I, my former husband Simeon Narchimid, uh, worked with it rather extensively. Um, just, you know, I would go to Thoth ask some things about it, then Simeon would ask more questions, and I'd go, you know, it was an inquiry thing, and he had really good questions, and we'd just work with it to bring out more on the whole topic. So, um, this article is based on that. In Temple Doors, Volume 2, 1997, Simeon wrote an article entitled Isis I Aeropax, in which he compiled my source translated Thoth material on the area packs accumulated since 1994. Okay, correction, not 91, but 94. And additional information through me based on his questions and as well through my own direct receipt of information. This finely tuned composite article was the result. I now wish to quote a little from this 1997 article and further add commentary concerning the area packs from my current, that is, uh, when this article was written, which is uh, 2000 and something, um, my current Akashic Thoth perspective in its relationship to the new Earth star. And before I begin, I just want to see what this would have been, 2006. Okay. But the article is 1997. Okay, here's the article that was a composite between my translated work and, and, and uh, Simeon's inquiry. The Isis I, or Aeropax, is becoming an ever more important geometric dynamic in both the planetary and personal aspects of the ascension. The geometric was first given to Maya in 1994 by Thoth as a means to open an omnigate into the Atosic universe. Now, I'm going to pause a moment. In my previous um, video where I was talking about uh, the CERN project, that one was um, CONCERN, uh, the, the video name, and uh, I, I spoke about the Atosic universe, and I've spoken about it before, too, but how uh, that is the neutral universe, the Atosic universe, we can even call it the mother universe, for this particular universe. If you want to know more details about that, probably the last video I did on CERN, S-E-R-N, uh, I believe I called the article something about a grave concern. Yes, that was the name of the, of the not article, the video. You can find out more about the Atosic universe, but I'm going to 
proceed here with this one. Since that time, it has been spoken of or referred to numerous times in temple doors, and we have even had verification from a current day Mayan priest that it is the same as what the Mayans use on the inner planes as their time gate. As a matter of fact, this individual was quite surprised to see the piece of jewelry Maya had crafted in the form of this geometric sitting on our altar, as it wasn't as he wasn't aware anyone else outside of the inner circle of the current Mayan priesthood knew about it. So now, Thoth on the Areopax. Let's see if I can possibly get all of this stuff off the screen. I'm sorry about this. There we go. It is a geometric for bringing together the Atasic universe as a point of mind, not in a physical sense, but as a hologram in the mind, enabling that sentience to sustain passage through conflicting time gates. The Areopax harmonic is a grid of time reality exchange. Once activated, the grid allows the passage between multi-layered time fields without distortion. There are 16 reference nodes, These po those points of synapse which create a referral of information through the grid. There are six matrices in which to create virtual reality fields and the rhombic spinning field in the center. This spinning field is the time tunnel or vertical for movement within the entire process. The parallel bar is the core accelerator, charging, discharging, and maintaining the energy separation between the realities. Without the core accelerator, all interacting realities would become enmeshed in one another, something like wadding bundles of chewing gum together and then trying to separate them. When the Isis I Areopax is activated through human intelligence and spiritual rapport with its dynamic focus through the earth, according to Thoth, those participating form a spinning wheel of emerald light around us. From this wheel, we see the Areopax arise. Each of the 16 points, fiery yodes, form the book of life, the six fields within the boundaries of the points are quickened as windows of crystal containing of crystal containing the libraries of all earth dimension we set this living merkaba of the areopax upon the land in another passage from thoth the ascension of earth on the ascension of earth he states that once the planet is fully within the conversion zone its central sunatoma in the very center of the earth also known as the Holy of Holies, will lock onto the greater Isis I, that's the Areopax, coordinates emanating from the 4444 Stargate, placing this sphere we currently inhabit into the Earth center diamond of the geometric. Now the center diamond, let's take a look at that just a moment so we know where we are. You see the central diamond that's circling the blue stone there, the blue crystal. Getting back to my article. Once the planet and the souls who choose to ascend into the new Earth star's numisome move through the 4444 Stargate, and then at a stage of this process, full integration of the old Earth and numisome, that's the first level, of course, of the new Earth star, occurs, the Isis I, the Earth's Isis I, becomes the Iris I in a brilliant flash, and the baseline of the planet Earth becomes Numis Ohm, a world system to planet. The booster rocket of the old Earth falling away and recycling
Apologies, had to stop for a coughing spell. <clears throat> Let me try that again. The booster rocket of the old Earth falling away and recycling into another world system two, another world system one, I'm sorry, no longer a part of the package we call Earth. You know, I read that so poorly. Let me just start that part over again. Once the planet and the souls who choose to ascend into the new Earth star stars, the new Earth stars, Numis Ohm, move through the 4444 Stargate, and then, at a stage of this process, full integration of the old Earth and Numisome occurs. The Earth's Isis eye becomes the Iris eye in a brilliant flash, and the baseline of planet Earth becomes Numisome, a world system two planet. The booster rocket of the old Earth falling away and recycling into another world system one, no longer a part of the package we call Earth. It's pretty heavy duty, so I wanted to be able to read it correctly. As I wrote in Temple Doors, Volume 2, 1991, and repeated in Volume 1, 2006 of this publication, the planet's Ka is no longer Altheria, for it has progressed into a more defined and rarefied state known now as Numis Ohm. When the blue ray of the, our Earth is fully in, integrated with the violet ray of Numis Ohm, there will burst forth into a glorious blue-violet flame, the iris eye. This is the bonding flame of the new Earth star, when our world and its supernal form will join at the apex of the metatronic spiral through the eye of the needle, the iris eye, through what Solara of Starborn refers to as the healing of Orion. We are, at, we as an inspirited world will be able to depolarize our consciousness so that we can enter the iris eye where all polarities are one. Now this entry into the all polarities are one comes a long way off from our current process because we, even when we go into the new Earth star, we are in uh, Numisome for a period of time before any of this occurs. But it's important to understand it um, because the iris eye will be overlighting and overseeing this entire process once we move into Numisome, even though we're not going through the eye of it yet. It will be the eye that sees us and knows us and we experience through it. It's important to understand, and I've, I've emphasized this before, but this is massive what I'm attempting to talk about, not just the area packs and all that, but the whole thing. And it's so massive that I'm just, you know, Thoth is giving me these little names, uh, you know, symbolic names, and, and this phase is this name, and this phase is this name, to try to allow us to understand just some of the processing that's going on with the whole Earth ascension and the whole planetary field of the new Earth star and what we enter, we're entering into and how it feels and what it is like and how we can, we can grasp it and apprehend it now because the more we do it now, we bring it through into fruition, into our field, into what, who we are. Remember, time is our uh, process, you know, it's, it's, it's an illusory process, an illusion not in the sense that we need to do away with it because we have to have it in order to get to where we're going. But, but you know, we're already there now in, if, we, if we take away time. So he's trying to get us into the feel of this, into the experience of it in our being, in our bones, in our DNA, what it's like because it's really already there now. So to continue... This depolarization will, with, will not complete in the new Earth star. Only when we go beyond a world system two will we enter into the Atosic universe through the golden star Missouriel. However, once the iris eye flash occurs, we will experience an acute balance of polarities within our new Earth star journey. Returning to the Areopax in the here and now, this sacred geometric can be utilized singly and especially powerfully in groups to create fully metatronic Merkabuk, Merkabuk, <laughs> oh gosh, 
<laughs> I just invented a new word. Uh, okay, let me try that again. If I can keep from getting into one of my giggling fits now. A fully metatronic mercabic feels for temporal periods of time in which germinations of the new earth light codes can become engendered and multiply on their own beyond the temporal areopax dynamic engendered. This then takes humanity, takes our humanity into a great giant step further in becoming the Elohim for our own creating new earth star, created new earth star. Once we get in touch with this reality through the various forms of being and expression, all relating what is here being called the Areopax dynamic, we need no assistance from the angels or ascended beings to accomplish our own regenesis, for we will know, indeed experience, that they are us, that they and us are one. Several years ago, in a session with both through me, Maya, for William Bueller, longtime friend and one who devotes his life work to sacred geometry, earth grids, and synergy groups, both gave information on Zenai. I don't know how to pronounce that. Oh, yes, it says here, Zinzi. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Let's try it again. Zinzi. Six states of Areopax being. Six states of Areopax being. The first one, you can see it. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, okay? Elemental, systemic, functional, sentient. The next one, connective, options, choices, communicative, path to micro macrocosm. Three is merging streams of reality, finding unity in dualistic systems. The fourth is primary activation in heart coherency to all points of intelligence. The fifth is transcending dualism, hierarchy, and transfiguring primary element, elements. And the last, the sixth, is embracing all powers, portents, and principles as a living and vibrating wave of the fearless flame. Okay, take a moment to look at the fearless flame. Oh dear, we don't want to go through the whole thing, but... Uh, from the pinnacle of the seventh ray, the nine god forms descend into the star of matter. In this sixth fullness, the golden triangle of above and below unite as one solidarity. Herein is found the rose mystica, the incorporation of the light molecule in matter. Twelve of the stations of service radiating from the fearless flame within the rose. Now, it goes on, and we're just not going to go on with that because that's a whole other mind trip. Well, heart trip, actually. Um, let me get rid of this, get back to here. Uh, so, the Isis I, Areopax, and the Great Pyramid. Both, the Temple of the Risen One, Great Pyramid, has pyramidal programs of light embedded within it in accordance to the Flower of Life pattern called by several names in the ancient past which we choose to call here the Safa, also Safra, Safa and Safira, which means the way to divinity or sacred unity. Thrace, the pattern, and there you shall open the gateway to the chamber of the sun, S-O-N. An Akashic translation from the Book of the Queen, Safa was also known as the queen. Now, this is interesting because, of course, we have the white queen and the um, queen of the sun. And now we have Safa known as the queen. My love arises with the night. She penetrates all experience with her beauty and reigns over the day. She is the desire of the soul completed. In the unity of spirit. Thoth, understand that the true meaning of the flower of life, or the Safa, is not a series of lines to be traced on a grid, but the pattern in the heart that leads through the mother, queen, and the son to the son, king, in the body, mind, and soul. 
there is a corollary in the chamber of the risen one that allows the true initiate to become awakened and activated to the necessary light codes within her, his her being for the essential moment it is not necessary for a person to be physically in the pyramid for this to occur the temple of the risen one is merely identifying this awakening process in the being and facilitating it if called upon by the initiate to do so Thoth has shared with me that the great pyramid of Giza is a living dynamic of the Areopax. He further states that should 16 or more persons come together there in synergic process with the Areopax dynamic, a further level of entry would be achieved for the Earth into the New Earth hologram. Such a process would be greatly facilitated if the image of the areopax were employed perhaps as a print on canvas that could be placed on the floor with the group around it. Also, it would add considerably to the power of the procedure if each individual were wearing an areopax crafted in gold and silver with the gemstone in the center, aquamarine, tanzanite, blue topaz, herkimer, or diamond. The next best alternative would be to wear the image on your chest in the form of a t-shirt. If anyone reading this decides to gather a group of 16 or more for such an areopax process at the Great Pyramid or other sacred sites, you may use the process Thoth gave. We form a spinning wheel of emerald light around us. From this wheel, we see the Isis eye areopax arise. Each of the 16 points as, if, as fiery yodes together form the book of life. The six fields within the boundaries of the points are quickened as windows of crystal containing the libraries of all earth dimension, dimension period. <laughs> we set this living Merkaba of the areopax upon the land. At this point, follow your own intuitive guidance, allow the current to move through you individually and as a group to set the living Merkaba of the Areopax upon and into the land. If any person works with the Areopax process at a sacred site conductive to its frequency, it will have a positive effect. If they are in a group of five or more, even if the other person's present are not aware of the areopax or its process but are there nonetheless for spiritual connection there will be even stronger activation of this channel than one person alone yet 16 or more in the mag is the magic quotient to maximize potential there should be persons aware of the process and employing the geometric symbol in some way you can also use the Areopax as an individual for personal healing and balance on all levels. If you decide to work with the Areopax sacred geometry as a group, I would appreciate it if you would contact me. All right, folks. This was written in 2007, but based on material prior to that, back in the 1990s. We have now passed the 2012 mark. We are now at 2016 as I speak this. And... I'm going to stop here. I'll come back to this personal story, but the, I'm really getting excited at this point because that's not it. Wait a minute. We're going, I'm coming to that later, but where am I? Where am I? Oh, dear. This is blocking where I want to go back to, and that is unfortunate because I want to read this page to you. So let me just pause a moment, and I will recapture that page. Now, in 2007, was it, I believe, um, Thoth had a suggestion, okay? And it was not followed through with, and I believe now is the time to do it. But I'm going to read to you what it was. My luminary mentor, Thoth Reismas of Afra, has requested that Spirit Heart Sanctuary slash Spirit Mythos, which I would now say I would call New Earth Star inner academy begin a light program of installing and activating the areopax dynamic 4444 ascension stargate key into the planetary grid it is now our intent not our intention to do this alone 
We merely need the mouthpiece to begin this activity through those individuals who feel guided to participate. We will also take an energetic role ourselves as individuals. Now, this was Maya, Simeon, and I, and, um, you know, the Merc Above Consciousness we created. Well, you know, things happen in life, and Simeon and I, uh, you know, dissolved our marriage, went our separate ways. Of course, we still are very kindred and still very close, but uh, this did not take place for various reasons, not just that in our life. Now, let me stress, the earth does not stop doing this because we had a situation arise. So I'm not saying that this process is not ongoing or going to be going on the planet. I'm just saying that we didn't take place part of it, you know. So now I'm feeling it is the time for me to do this, for me to, uh, as, as the New Earth Star Inner Academy now in 2016, to develop some process here for this. And... Um, when I say develop, it's going to be very loosely developed, just a basic format. And I'm going to be asking people to step forward to take groups into these places to do this work, or perhaps graft it on to the group works that they're already doing, which is probably more practical. So this is something I'm looking at right now, and I'm thinking of reactivating in a new format for this purpose. But that's not what this video is about. I'm just letting you know that that's where this is going. I really feel it very strongly. Um, I don't think that really I need to cut that off. I don't really think I need to read any more there. That's kind of going off in another detail. But what I do want to show you that is really important here is that when I began Osiris Arising, which is really taking up the Areopax cause. Uh, you know, it's working with it very, very much so. Uh, let me see if I can find the picture I'm looking for here. Thoth gave me this image. Now, of course, I created this artwork-wise, but he directed it. And you'll notice that the Areopax is missing the horizontal bar. And uh, this is a really important phase that's ongoing here. And so, on my Osiris Arising blog, website, here we go, this one. I was guided to create a new version of the Isis Eye or Areopax for the Osiris Fire Star Kachina activation. Now, for those of you who don't know about that, um, <laughs> that's a whole big thing, but that's on the Osiris Arising uh, blog. And you can just tap into this, uh, Cyrus Arising. If you write this in, in the Google, you should come up with this website. And if you um, type in to my search, if you type in a Cyrus Firestar Kachina, you'll get the whole process there. So let's just assume you kind of know about that. And we're going to continue reading here. I was guided to create a new version of the Isis Eye or Area Packs for the Osiris Firestar Kachina activation. You will notice that on this version, the central horizontal bar of the Isis eye is removed. The spine is open for full being ascension. The first activational art I created, created for the Osiris Firestar Kachina activation opens the base chakra. That's this one here. Whoops, no, no, this is writing about it. I'm sorry. We don't want to go into that right now, so we'll just close it. It creates the insignia of fire in that chakra specifically for the process of the Osiris Kachina dance. The Isis I version is for the crown chakra. Here the flame is taken to the full power awake enlightened awareness. The Isis I dynamic was first presented to me in the 1980s. Well, you know, that's not true. <laughs> it's hard to keep track here. I think it was in the 1994 when that first came through. But maybe some, some parts of it came through in the 1980s. I'm not sure. Anyway, it was back there in the Stone Age sometime. It is one of the major core dynamics. Thoth brings back into this picture for me again and again. Now suddenly it has emerged within the Osiris Arising Project, which upon reflection makes perfect sense to me. Um, here, you know, if you want to 
get the uh, high resolution version of this image, ta-da, this nice the one that you'll see over here, that one, which I think is the most potent one at this time. Um, anyway, if you want that, just contact me. Whoops, let me get back over here. It, uh, or you can use this, well, actually, you can use the special payment link here on here, and the price is $25 for a uh, very good resolution uh, digital image. You could put it, you could make a huge canvas of it if you wanted to. It's a little aside, but let us continue here. Oh, and the portal members, of course, can receive the whole thing by clicking here. They can get that with no charge. To understand the importance of the ISIS I area packs, um, the ISIS I and the New Earth, which we just read, there will be one more activational art for this series, and I already did that. So um, let's see. There's no more on this that, that really comes up. Let's see. It's talking about how to use the image here, which you can do, you know, and just go to that page and you'll find it. I don't want to get too off topic here, but I'm trying to pull all these pieces together because I feel this is a, a turning point in the whole Osiris Arising project because this is definitely a part of it. And I'm going to be on it very quickly here. So I'm not through, though. We have a little more to go because this is what stimulated me to get make this video today. My dear friend Bart sh uh, alerted me to this particular article because he knew it obviously related to the Isis eye. I mean, just look at that image. You know, there it is. This one has the horizontal bar, too. What is phase conjunction? Well, this is supposed to represent phase conjunction. Oh, this is a whole long article, and I really don't want to read it all because we're going on and on here. But let's just get into a bit of it. Phase conjunction is originally and classically understood in the optics literature. You take pairs of laser beams precisely approaching in opposite directions. If they meet and conjugate perfectly, then at the center, they phase conjugate. So how do lasers meet to conjugate? When they meet in precise opposing pairs, that is often called four-way mixing, Getting opposing exactly phase-locked laser beams to align this way is very tricky and very expensive because you need alignment accuracy down to angst angstrom levels. <laughs> Sounds like a town in Sweden. I have often suggested that the best way to visualize how wave fonts, fronts meet to phase conjugate is to visualize pine cones learning to kiss noses. <laughs> Um, okay, this article goes on and on about it, but look here. Let us re-examine our image above and see if we understand ourselves why this perfect cone vortex of golden ratio phase conjugation solves both infinite compression and the origin of gravity. Remember, our new proofs regarding this accurately defined grade eye of hydrogen. Now, I'm going to put a link to this article where I embed my video that I'm speaking on right now. So if you really want to go into it, there it is. But look at this. The holy grail of fusion, implosion, also has a psychological component. I mean, I'm just all tingly all over because this is my kind of thing. As the wave proceeds inward on the cone, in order to create only constructive wave interference, the sine wave must converge the golden ratio proportions. The point here is that at each cross point of the waves, the wave nodes, the wave interference phenomena, both adds and multiplies. Note that the golden ratio pro progression is the only geometry which b supports both adding and multiplying to achieve constructive wave interference. You can see visually how the golden proportion invites this recursive constructive wave interference to proceed theoretically to some infinite limit. Actually, our equations for the wavelengths and frequencies of all self-organizing phenomena, especially life force in the form of photosynthesis dimensions, etc., strongly suggests that this infinite limit is definitely 
the Planck time and length dimension. This makes sense as physics rather than rather agrees this makes sense as physics rather agrees the Planck wave dimensions in time and space are the common musical key signature of all matter, literally the dimensions of the sacred. What is especially important to point out here is that the golden racial constructive wave interference in this geometry is not just constructively adding and multiplying wavelength, but in fact, and perhaps more importantly, is a significant component of the charge wave inertia in golden racial hydrogen, for example, known as phase velocity. So a portion of the wave that was undergoing constructive compression by golden ratio is now undergoing acceleration. In this way, the golden ratio allows a portion of the constructive compression of ch charge to turn into the constructive acceleration of that charge. Although some would quibble, I still believe that, in fact, the acceleration of charge is in truth indistinguishable from gravity. In other words, this is the origin of acceleration of charge, which we call gravity. In summary, golden racial conjunctate wave geometry is therefore the only form of charge compression which by its perfect golden ratio heterodyne geometry turns compression of charge into the acceleration of charge. This phase conjunction conjunctation as the way as the way initiating charge acceleration, I hypothesize, is the only reason gravity exists. Well, <clears throat> well, this is great about gravity, but it's also great about the whole ascension process. It's in a nutshell here and in, of course, here, because this is Osiris arising. I'm kind of overwhelmed at this point, and my pitiful little video that I've just made for you here with me stuttering and coughing and everything is just not going to cut it. So I'm going to see how I can put this together in a more professional format as well. I'm going to release this video, but I also want to work with this and get it together in a more cohesive manner that people can read and study because that's the first phase in doing all of this. And then the second phase is bringing the groups together and putting out this to a planetary scale. I cannot possibly do this alone. I can't even barely, you know, I, I was applauding myself because I actually got in the car and with great help was able to get to the North Shore of this island 40 minutes away and spend some time there and come back again. That was my great triumph for the day. And, you know, I anticipate getting better and better, but I don't anticipate my being able to facilitate such a giant program alone. So I'm going to be calling on people and hoping they will answer the call to help put this into fruition and take it beyond, far beyond me, you know, and what I'm doing here. Uh, but at least I feel that I need to start it off. And people that are resonant with it will take it forward from there. And so I believe, I do believe, I'm going to conclude this video, but certainly this is opening the door to a much larger project, which is, you know, it's the Osiris Arising project. Where does it go from here? Well, this is where it goes. So many blessings for now, and let us see what happens next. Aloha.